Um, I'm a chaplain, a pastoral care of, so today it's not going to be like Carol's uh, health-based and uh, medical-based and uh, statistics. Um, uh, it's mainly a journey uh, for those uh, health um, service providers who are working or going to work with uh, Muslims who have HIV AIDS. Um, to be able to communicate and uh, uh, provide a good, uh, wholesome service, health uh, service providers need to live with you know about who are those Muslims, what's their background, what do they believe in, um, and from that context, um, they might be able to provide a wholesome service. Okay. So. Uh, what is Islam? Uh, Islam has been mentioned uh, a lot uh, throughout the last 20 years in different contexts, but really what is Islam as in the Arabic for Islam? Um, it's basically uh, peace and submission, that's what it means, salam, Islam, same root uh, uh, word, submission, peace, which is peace with one's self, peace with the surroundings, and with submission to the will of God. What is a Muslim? Um, some people say, you know, this is an Islamic person. Um, the proper name for a person who's, who follows Islam is Muslim. And that, that means that a person is willingly, consciously, submitting to the will of God. Generally speaking, uh, subconsciously we all submit to the will of God in the sense of when he says go, we go. No one has control over their heartbeat or circulation of their blood. It's under the control of the Creator. In the Islam, that's the Islamic point of view. Belief system. It's uh, Islam is uh, belief inside the heart and actions. So uh, the pillars of Islam, which is the acts of worship to believe in the oneness of God and uh, uh, to establish the prayer, five daily prayer. So you see people who are practicing Islam wake up at 5.30 every day, do the first prayer, midday, afternoon, uh, sunset, which is very important for people who are fasting, especially in Ramadan, if you have uh, work with people who are fasting. Uh, sunset, sunrise and sunset are very crucial. Uh, times of the day, where before sunset, the sunrise uh, uh, stopping the food and drink, and at sunset, um, everything else back to normal. Uh, apart from the daily prayers, there's uh, almsgiving. Two and a half percent of uh, yearly saving need to be given to the poor as a purification of the wealth. Purification of the uh, body and soul is through. Uh, of one month of fasting in Ramadan each year. This year is coming around the 1st of July. Something to note. Um, and uh, a journey to Mecca, you know, to just uh, follow the steps of uh, Abraham, Prophet Abraham, uh, in his journey to Mecca and building the first house of worship. This uh, pilgrimage once in a lifetime is only for those people who are physically economically are able to do that journey. So it's not a must unless you are capable and able. Uh, so what's the uh, Articles of Faith? Again, uh, it just goes focusing on the belief in the one God, Allah in Arabic. And you need to uh, realize that Allah is an Arabic word for God. So Christians who live in an Arabic land, or even Jews, uh, when they want to worship the Creator, they call upon Allah. Even before Islam, the Arabs, they used to invoke and pray to their God, saying Allah. The only difference is Allah hasn't got plural, so it's not God's. You can't say Allah's, it's just Allah. So it's just a unique name of the Creator of the heavens and earth and all of that's in between. And uh, uh, it can't be uh, plural, it's genderless, it can't be goddess, can't can't be 
so it's not male or female. And uh, uh, it's, it's un unique for the supreme deity. Uh, other beliefs, we believe in angels, so we've got a very similar to Judaism and uh, Christianity and the belief in angels. We have to believe in all the previous scriptures that's revealed by God, such as the Torah and the Gospel. We have to believe in all the prophets from Adam, Abraham, uh, Moses, uh, Jesus, peace be upon them all. And we, if, if we deny one of them, the existence or believe in one of them, we are out of Islam. Again, um, we believe uh, one of the things is, uh, you know, the article of faith, the core belief in, uh, as a Muslim is if I choose right now to remove my hijab, I'm still a Muslim. But if I deny one of those articles, I go out of Islam and I have to re-establish my religion and faith to Islam. So if I say um, uh, I deny the uh, the uh, Virgin birth of uh, Jesus, peace be upon him, that uh, Mary was a virgin and uh, she gave birth to Jesus. If I deny that, I'm out of Islam and I have to start again. Um, one of the important things is the belief in the final day, that we are living in this life, a temporary uh, life that has got a finite end and they will be going to another stage. Uh, we have the stage of the uh, grave and then resurrection where we can be judged for what we have earned on this life so whoever didn't uh, get compensation of what they've lost to they will be getting and, and justice will be uh, prevailing I don't know why I'm <laughs> maybe some water please <laughs> thank you you're beautiful, lovely people, so I'm not sure why. <laughs> okay. Um, what's the principle of medical ethics in Islam? So necessity generally overrides prohibition. So we, we are not allowed to uh, eat or have anything to do with pork. But if the uh, medicine uh, has got pork and that's the only uh, medicine that it can be given, we are allowed. So uh, we are not allowed to drink alcohol. We are in a, like, you know, lost in a desert and the only thing that's there is alcohol to survive and keep us alive, that's okay. So living is more important uh, than anything else to survive and live. Uh, removing harm at every cost. Um, if there's two evils or two bad things uh, and there's no other alternative, we choose the lesser of the two evils. So say, you know, a pregnant uh, uh, woman uh, and she is well into her pregnancy and that pregnancy is going to cause her death, um, abortion is, uh, you know, the, the preferred, uh, you know, a choice that is encouraged by uh, scholars, by everyone. So, uh, you know, choosing the lesser of the harms is, uh, is uh, very important uh, in the Islamic context. Public interest overrides individual interest. If, some, if, if one person uh, is going to create, uh, you know, uh, havoc in, in, in the area, the, the majority of people are more important than this person. This person can be isolated if they have a disease that's contagious and stuff like that. So we had 1400 years ago uh, um, a method of uh, quarantine. Um, and harm reduction uh, concept, which is very important in, in what we have now, HIV, AIDS. Uh, yes, we have rules and regulations that we uh, can't or we shouldn't uh, transgress, but we are human being, we are fallible, we do mistakes, and when mistakes are done, uh, we need to, you know, uh, help the person um, get over what, you know, they're going through. Okay. So I've, uh, you know, I looked into the, um, the this, this problem that uh, was very highlighted in the, uh, 
1987. It was only six months in Australia, and uh, all of a sudden it disappeared. So I thought to myself, it has to, you know, to to stem the spread from an Islamic perspective. It has to work, walk hand in hand with the wider community, with a national Australia-wide awareness campaign. And of course, the community, Muslim community, need to be involved in it. So um, I've seen lots of STD kind of uh, advertisement going on um, at the train station with you know a person with uh, you know his jacket and that bunny coming out of it, and it's a funny business. But I thought you know STD, HIV, AIDS, it's not a funny business. It's real, you know, very bad you know, situation one can get themselves into. And we need to take it seriously when we are campaigning. It's, it's life and death. It's not, you know, uh, something that people can be cured uh, with a, um, a Panadol or, you know, antibiotic or something like that. It's very serious. And um, uh, I remember <laughs> the Grim Reaper, uh, if most of you must, might have uh, seen it in the 87, 87 I think. Um, uh, and there is a statistic that STD, not only HIV, but STD uh, uh, numbers is dropped drastically. And there was a um, article in the age the other day, the saying that uh, uh, you know STD just like uh, um, average kind of uh, minor uh, sexually transmitted diseases are on the rise, and they were calling on, you know, campaigners to go back to that shock kind of uh, commercial. Uh, anyone remembers that commercial? Yeah. yeah, I was uh, in this country six months and two things really stood out for me. Um, the Grim Reaper and uh, um, the late Princess Diana's attitude to uh, greeting and well, uh, visiting the patients in hospitals who had AIDS. So uh, before her um, visiting, it was very much a stigmatized kind of uh, uh, situation and everyone was so scared of even shaking hands. And seeing her on TV, shaking hands, this, you know, um, you know princess going down to earth and uh, not afraid of, uh, you know, contacting with her hand, uh, you know, broke down, uh, you know, lots of barriers to tell you the truth, and that's from my perspective. And this, this ad really, you know, uh, shook me. It's very, you know, awakening kind of call for people to just think before they act. So, uh, yeah, I saw this picture yesterday. It says, prevention is the only cure we've got. So there is really, as Carol said, there's no actual cure. <coughs> you know, delaying, you know, preventing, uh, you know, more complications, but no cure. Well, this is the Islam stands, stands to prevention. So how is the Islamic prevention comes along? Islam's view on sexual habits, uh, like most divine religions, Islam condemns promiscuity, drug use, and any sexual relationships outside the sanctity of marriage. So, uh, you know, even a, a, a man or a woman, before they have marriage, Islam frowns upon any intimate relationship outside the marriage. So, most important means the protection is obviously abstinence from sex if not married, and to remain faithful to the marriage partner 